the James Webb Space Telescope has been making headlines for all sorts of discoveries, from characterizing distant galaxies and changing our understanding of planet and star formation. But the most interesting thing James Webb has done, in my opinion, is the study of planets outside the solar system. We already know of well over 5,000 planets in the Milky Way, but know next to nothing about the vast majority of them. James Webb has begun to change that, using various instruments to detect the gases that make up the atmospheres of many planets, from the TRAPPIST-1 system to hot Jupiters, and rocky planets unlike anything we've ever seen. So what has it discovered about the worlds outside the solar system? To start, I should mention that all of these discoveries are still very new, and so are subject to change. This video will probably be outdated after a while, and some discoveries I mentioned could be proven wrong. So if there's anything wrong in this video, just tell me in the comments. Some of the first planets James Webb observed were hot Jupiters, which are large gas giant planets that orbit extremely close to their stars. I've already made a separate video going more in depth about hot Jupiters, link in the description, but James Webb has already begun to change our views of these planets. This is WASP-80b, which was officially named Wadi Rum in 2019, one of the first hot Jupiters James Webb observed. James Webb found methane in Wadi Rum's atmosphere, which, until now, was almost never seen on exoplanets, despite it being common in our solar system. The discovery of methane on Wadi Rum proved that James Webb was capable of seeing this chemical, which will be important in the future. James Webb has also shown it's capable of detecting water vapor when it detected strong signs of it on Boca Prins, another hot Jupiter. Since James Webb can detect water vapor and methane on large planets, it opens up the opportunity for similar discoveries on smaller, potentially habitable, rocky planets. This would be important because methane can sometimes be a sign of life, and water vapor can provide evidence that oceans exist on the planet. But before we get to the true Earth-sized worlds of TRAPPIST-1 and similar systems, we have to talk about the intermediate range of planets, mini-Neptunes. This is K218b, LHS114ab, and GJ1214b, the last of which has been officially named Enipotia. These planets are about 5 to 8 times the mass of Earth, and two of the three orbit within their star's habitable zone, where temperatures are right for liquid water. Of this trilogy of planets, K218b has been in the news the most, mainly because there's been a reported discovery of dimethyl sulfide, a chemical that, on Earth, can only be produced by life. That, combined with the fact that K218b is in its star's habitable zone, and that it could have an ocean, made it seem like the planet might actually have life. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of misinformation about this planet. Firstly, James Webb did not detect dimethyl sulfide. The signs of this chemical are so weak they could also be attributed to random noise in the data, meaning it's too early to say if the dimethyl sulfide actually exists or not. The planet's oceans are also not confirmed, since water vapor was not detected in the planet's atmosphere, but density measurements of the planet suggest it could exist. So, K218b likely doesn't have signs of life, but it still might. It'll just have to be looked at again. LHS-1140b was another planet thought to be potentially Earth-like, but in this case, James Webb likely ruined its chances. The planet was originally thought to be rocky, like Earth, but new observations showed this isn't likely, and the planet actually resembles a smaller version of Neptune. So, LHS-1140b has mostly been removed from the list of potentially habitable planets. Enipotia is another mini-Neptune, but this time outside the habitable zone, giving an average temperature of over 500 degrees. But this planet is thought to have a significant atmosphere, and below it, water might be so pressurized it's prevented from evaporating and remains liquid even in the high temperatures. Enipotia is one of the most likely candidates for an actual ocean planet, and its name literally means large body of water in the Ma language. James Webb has already begun to change our understandings of planets of this type, and confirmed the presence of Enipotia's atmosphere and gave us the average temperature. Many Neptunes like Enipotia don't exist in our solar system, and so the only way to study them is to look at other stars. However, there's another planet that's the polar opposite of these potentially habitable and water-rich mini-Neptunes, Janssen. 55 Cancri E, which has been officially named Janssen, is a rocky planet about eight times the size of Earth, similar in size to other mini-Neptunes. But unlike them, Janssen is extraordinarily hot, with temperatures on the day side of the planet being measured at over 3,000 degrees. The 55 Cancri system, and Janssen especially, were one of the major targets for James Webb, and the results have been far more disappointing than the mini-Neptunes and hot Jupiters. Janssen has been found by James Webb to have little to no atmosphere. It's a planet half the size of Neptune, but with no air of any kind to speak of. This wasn't expected, as other observations from different telescopes seem to suggest Janssen did have an atmosphere, but those have now been proven wrong. Dozens of planets like Janssen exist, and James Webb has studied some of them. 
The planets Kua Kua and Su are especially disappointing because they're similar in size to Earth but are completely airless. One of the smallest exoplanets found to date, Tahe, is also likely airless according to James Webb data. Many other hot rocky planets, including LTT 1445AB, which orbits in a triple star system, are airless as well. Rocky planet after rocky planet has been confirmed to have no atmosphere by James Webb, which has been hugely disappointing. Even the TRAPPIST-1 system isn't immune to this. TRAPPIST-1 is a system with seven Earth-sized rocky planets, three of which orbit in their star's habitable zone, making it the number one target in the search for life with James Webb. As of the time of making this video, James Webb has already studied four of the seven planets. The first two, TRAPPIST-1b and c, are airless, though there is still some hope for planet c having a very thin atmosphere. TRAPPIST-1h, the outermost planet of the system, has a flat spectrum, also indicating it doesn't have any sort of large atmosphere, and the data for TRAPPIST-1d, the first of the three potentially habitable planets, has come back inconclusive. However, TRAPPIST-1e and f have the highest chances of having an atmosphere, so not all hope has been lost for TRAPPIST-1. But the way things are going now, I wouldn't be very optimistic about having habitable planets in TRAPPIST-1. But not everything is bad for these small, hot planets. LHS-1140b has an atmosphere of some kind, and the planets SU and LTT-1445AB also still have a chance of having an atmosphere. Janssen might not have an atmosphere, but it very likely does have oceans of molten lava all across its surface, making it interesting nonetheless. So, not everything is hopeless. Of the rocky planets James Webb has died so far, just one has direct evidence for an atmosphere. K2-141b K2-141b is another large planet about five times the mass of Earth, but has a high density suggesting it's rocky and not another mini-Neptune. It has a dayside temperature of over 3,000 degrees and is likely tidally locked to its star, like many of the airless exoplanets James Webb has already studied. The dayside temperatures of this planet are hot enough to cause rocks to evaporate like water evaporates on Earth, where the rock vapor likely moves over to the permanent night side of the planet, which is much colder, where it rains down as lava. This vaporized rock creates an atmosphere around K2-141b, and while it's not known what it's made of, James Webb has confirmed it exists, making it one of the very few rocky planets outside the solar system with a confirmed atmosphere. But just having an atmosphere doesn't make the planet any more pleasant. It likely has oceans of lava tens of miles deep, with the only solid land existing on the night side. The wind speeds on this planet are expected to be several miles per second, causing the planet to be a never-ending hurricane of lava. This planet makes Janssen, Kua Kua, Su, and other hot rocky planets to look like paradises by comparison. Since the composition of the atmosphere is unknown, not much else is known about the climate of the planet. But, if the atmosphere has high levels of sodium, it would rain down on the night side and solidify. Then, these chunks of solid sodium would slowly drift onto the day side and act like a twisted version of icebergs on Earth. James Webb has only scratched the surface of the exoplanets it plans to study. There are still so many planets on James Webb's to-do list, and the list of discoveries from this telescope will only grow as time grows on. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets, as well as my colonization of the solar system series.